Hi, so I'm now going to go through game two from the June 2007 prep test. Um, I'll just do a bit of a demonstration about how to set it up and go through the questions. Um, I'm going to do a bit of a mix of creating a diagram in this Word document um, while also uh, potentially annotating using um, the Zoom annotate function. So we'll see how those things work together. Uh, usually I just do pen and paper. So, um, or I just do the annotate function, but yeah, um, trying to a bit of a combination here. Um, maybe it'll go a little faster. Okay. So uh, we've got three films. These are gonna be our players. Okay, so identifying your players is an important first step. Um, they're being shown during a film club's festival held on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Our positions would then be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay, um, great. So, um, that's what we have so far. Identifying players, identifying positions is important. Um, the next thing that I think is really um, key is the frequency. So kind of our, our default or standard frequency is a one-to-one -one ratio of players to positions where um, each player just gets locked into a particular position and each position um, contains just one unique player. Um, so that's sort of the default that we may expect. And here, because we have three players in three positions, we may expect it even more. We might think, oh, okay, well, we're just trying to figure out which film is shown on which day. Wow, we only have three. That seems really simple, really easy. Um, and in fact, it probably seems too easy. And you're thinking, yeah, it's, it's probably not going to be how it's, uh, it's going to work. Um, maybe you know, there's going to be some kind of grid that we need to create. Um, yeah, so uh, we're not going to have more than one um, position here, right? I mean, we, uh, we could have more than one position per day and that, you know, we might have um, different times on Thursday, uh, but we can't have two Thursdays unless we're talking about two different weeks. Um, it looks like we are just creating a schedule. So I wouldn't overcomplicate it too much, especially when you do have days of the week. Um, I just kind of write it out the way that you normally would um, schedule. You can also look to the first question often because usually the first question is an acceptability question, which one of the following is acceptable, right? Is, is possible. Um, and um, they're usually looking for something that is um, complete and accurate. So either complete and accurate order or complete and accurate grouping. Um, and so it, they're kind of giving you the layout of what you might see in um, a complete game board. So for question six here, we can see they just have Thursday, Friday, Saturday. On Thursday, they have limelight, then harvest. Um, so they don't have specific times laid out. It's just and limelight happens before harvest. Um, so really, we're just going to have our days, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and then on each day, we're going to have a list of the films that are shown that day. And we can have multiple films shown um, each day. It does say in the next sentence, if we go back into our um, into our little blurb here. Each film is shown at least once during the festival, but never more than once on a given day. So that tells you the frequency. Okay, so we're not dealing with the default of a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, we have uh, more potential players than positions. So uh, we have a minimum of um, one of each film um, across the whole board, right? Um, so for the festival, um, and then we have a maximum of one of each film per day. Okay, um, great. So each of the players will be used at least once um, to a maximum of three times if that player is in every position. So if that film is shown on every day. 
um, on each day, at least one film is shown. So the positions actually have a minimum as well. So we have a minimum of one player per position. Okay. Um, and, you know, even though they do say that um, the festival is held on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, until they tell us that on each day at least one film is shown, um, we don't know that we have to have at least one film on each day. Okay, so um, it's open to the possibility that there's a day where they have zero films. Um, now, that seems pretty strange for a film festival, um, but we don't wanna make assumptions um, about, the, about these kinds of things um, in the game. And uh, they will tend to be you know, explicit about that. Uh, but it, sometimes it comes down to just like the meaning of one word in a sentence. Um, so it's important to read through this blurb carefully and um, note that the subject matter, not important, but small words, um, you know, each and at least and um, that sort of thing, um, really, really key. So we're watching out for identifying those players, identifying the positions, and identifying the frequency. And that's going to help us establish um, the game board. Okay. Um, films are shown one at a time. That's another thing that, you know, we don't want to assume that things are going to happen in a particular sequence. Maybe on Thursday, you can have two films being shown simultaneously on different screens in different theaters. Um, so Again, yeah, we don't want to assume that there are no ties um, when we have a sequence, unless something tells us that we can't have ties, that we can't have two players um, in the same position in the sequence. Okay, so we can't have things at the same time. Um, now we know um, that they are shown one at a time. So we're never gonna have two films being shown simultaneously. That's good to know. All right, on Thursday, harvest is shown. Okay, so definitely we have harvest on Thursday and we can't have any film shown after harvest. So potential for films before harvest, right? So my the question mark is possibilities, um, but after harvest, nothing. Okay, so after harvest, we don't have anything um, anymore. On Friday, we have greed or limelight, but not both. So we have greed or limelight, okay? And not both is important there, okay? So we have to pick one of those two. Um, and if we have greed, we cannot have limelight. If we have limelight, we cannot have greed. Um, and then we don't have anything shown after it. So we could have something shown before it. What could we have before it? We could have harvest. Right, so we could have harvest and then greed or harvest and then limelight on Friday. So that might be something to keep in mind that these are actually my possibilities for Friday. There are just two of them. On Saturday, we have a similar structure and we end up with, um, we have limelight greed or limelight harvest. Um, we could also have just greed or just harvest. Same up here, right? Just greed or just limelight. So we do um, actually have four different options for each of Friday and Saturday. On Thursday, uh, we could have just harvest. We could have greed and then harvest, limelight and then harvest. We could have limelight, greed, harvest, or greed, limelight, harvest. Okay, so if we were trying to come up with all of the possible solutions for this whole board, it would be really overwhelming. Um, because we would have uh, five times four times four options, right? So um, we would end up with, what is that, like 80 options? Um, so just like way too many to be writing all of them out. But if we split it up and we think about what are the options on Thursday, what are the options on Friday, what are the options on Saturday, it's much more manageable. Okay. Um, all right, so 
Uh, which one of the following could be a complete and accurate description of the order in which the films are shown at the festival? Question six. We have our typical acceptability question. Okay, and I say typical because usually the first question um, reads very, uh, very similar to this. Um, and we use the same sort of method to answer this question. So um, I like to do a process of elimination for this one. Okay. Um, there are two different ways that we could do process of elimination. Um, one is we could eliminate um, starting with A, apply all the rules to A. If it works, um, then great, that's our answer, we move on. If it doesn't, we go down to B and so on. Um, and then um, to B. Um, and so that requires actually applying every rule to each scenario and what we're doing is we're going to a we apply rule one rule two rule three then to b rule one rule two rule three so on and so forth um but what you could do instead is you could eliminate um uh, so starting with e and going to e all right or you could eliminate starting with the simplest rule to apply and find the rule breakers. I prefer method two. Okay. So I would just take the easiest rule to apply and scan through to see which one breaks that rule, eliminate that answer choice, and continue um, with the remaining rules. So that way um, I'm, there are some answer choices that I only apply one rule to. Um, and because I'm applying the simplest ones first, I'm not spending that time applying more complex rules when it's not really necessary to find the rule breaker. Um, and usually you're going to have four rules, you have four rule breakers and each of the wrong answers breaks one of the rules. So um, usually it just works out that way. I mean, the, the difference here isn't going to be one of accuracy typically. So usually for this question, whatever process you choose, you're very likely to get the right answer. These ones tend to be easier. You can um, kind of apply the rules as they're written. You don't really need to make a lot of connections or deductions in order to get this type of question correct. Um, and I say, you know, typically that's the case. Obviously there are exceptions, but most of the time this is a fairly easy question and often one that you can do without even um, making any deductions. Like, um, you know, you might even just be able to read the rules one by one and get the correct answer here. Um, so the, the level of analysis is not that deep. Um, this does make it kind of a good question to do, or good question type to do, even on a game that you intend to skip because you're running out of time. Um, okay, so I'm kind of diverging in a few different directions here. Uh, for this question, I would eliminate starting with the simplest rule and just finding the rule breaker. So um, on Thursday, harvest is shown. So I have to have harvest and I can't have anything after it. So I'm just looking to eliminate based on that. So harvest, 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 uh, greed, then harvest, then limelight. Okay, so I have har harvest, that's fine, but it's not the last one. So D breaks rule one, um, E doesn't. Okay, so now I'm on to rule two. On Friday, we have to have either greed or limelight, but not both. And we can't have a film after it. So on Friday, I have limelight and then harvest. Well, that's not allowed. Um, if we're choosing limelight, limelight has to be um, the last one. So I could also just look here to the solutions that I've created um, and limelight then harvest is not an option. It would have to be harvest then limelight. So that one's out. Okay. Um, now, because we only have three rules, there's 
going to be more than one rule breaker per rule. So um, I do want to keep applying this rule. So uh, Friday, we have greed and limelight. That's a problem. Okay, we can't have both limelight and greed. We have one or the other because uh, we have to choose one and not both. All right, and then we have it down to A versus C and we're applying our last rule. Either greed or harvest is shown, but not both. And that's on Saturday. Um, greed or harvest, not both. Okay, so we've gotten it down to A versus C and none, uh, neither of these actually break any of the rules that are, um, you know, the extra conditions. So there's got to be something between these two that actually breaks one of our rules from the blurb, right? So the frequency here, we have a minimum of one of each film across the festival. So we have to have Limelight, Greed, and Harvest, each of them at least once. A breaks that rule, so that one's out. C is the correct answer. Um, so this is an atypical pattern, but we still got to the correct answer. We applied each of the rules one by one. Um, rather than you know going over these two again and again with all three of those rules, we realize, okay, maybe one of these breaks a condition that is nested within the blurb at the beginning. Okay, so I do find this way of doing it um, definitely more, I find it more organized. Um, if you are going to start with A and apply each of the rules to it, I would still start with rule one, then go to rule two, then go to rule three. Having it organized like that, like a list of things that you can tick off is extremely helpful. If you just go into it and you go, okay, well, um, what were the rules again? Or, oh, like, okay, so I have limelight here. What are the rules about limelight, right? If you, if you tackle any of the questions on the LSAT, answer choice first, okay, starting with the information in the answer choice and then, and then um, branching from there, you are going to run into difficulty. It is possible to get the correct answer, but it's definitely not the most efficient way to get the correct answer. You want to start with um, the information that you're given in the stimulus, whether that stimulus is long passage in reading comprehension, in, um, a paragraph in logical reasoning, or a game setup and rules in logic games. Um, this part here, even though spending time on it doesn't seem like it's going to get you through the questions fast, it will, okay, and maintaining some level of organization in this part is, is definitely helpful. Then also the question stem, especially in logic games, um, the question stem, you know, we see here they give us a question specific condition. This is new information that we do not want to ignore that's super, super helpful. And what we wanna do is we wanna combine this information with what we already know before we worry about the answer choices, right? Um, and before even we worry about what is the question specifically asking for, right? We wanna just make sure that we figure out, okay, that's, that's the information that's relevant. They're giving me new information about these players. What do I already know about those players? You know, what possibilities can I eliminate? Um, and then, all right, what's the question asking me for? Great. And you've, at that point, very likely you've got the correct answer or you've got a very good idea of what the correct answer is going to look like. So you're not spending a lot of time, um, you know, scanning through the answer choices or um, reading them in, in too much detail before you have a very clear idea of what you're looking for. Okay. Um, question seven is super easy because we have all of our possibilities. So which one of the following cannot be true? We're just looking for something that does not appear in our possibilities here. Um, so Harvest is the last film shown on each day of the festival. It can be the last film on Thursday. It cannot be the last film on Friday. So that cannot be true. A is the correct answer. Okay. 
eight, if limelight is never shown again during the festival once greed is shown. So um, what, as soon as we have greed, okay, so here it, it could be on Thursday, then we would never have limelight again. So we would have to eliminate the answer choices here where we have limelight. Um, then which one of the following is the maximum number of film showings that could occur during the festival? Okay, so we're trying to maximize the number of showings, but as soon as we show greed, we can't show limelight again. So what I would do is I would delay showing greed until the last possible moment so that I can show limelight all three days. Okay, so um, if we delay showing greed and we're trying to maximize the total number, so if I just highlight there, I'm gonna choose that one. I'm not gonna show greed, choose H and L, and here not gonna show greed, but still maximizing. Okay, and the total that I get is six. Okay, that's the correct answer. Okay, so we wanna think through our approach uh, rather than just looking at the answer choices. If greed is shown exactly three times, okay, so get the highlight off there. How big do I have to make this to actually get the highlighter? There. Okay, so, um, okay, oh, it's so interesting. It's like right at that point where if uh, I change this one, when does it switch? There we go. Okay, I prefer that way of looking at it. All right, so uh, we're going to take away the highlighter here. Uh, um, okay, so Greed is shown three times, okay? So I have to only show the scenarios where greed is involved. Greed. And here we have greed. Okay, so these guys. Okay, uh, harvest is shown exactly twice. So harvest isn't uh, gonna be on Saturday with greed anyways. So harvest will be on both Thursday and Friday and it's definitely gonna be last on Thursday. And then limelight is just shown once. So limelight could be either on Saturday or on Thursday. Okay, so those are options. Um, so I've got my options. They're asking which one of the following must be true. So something that um, all of these have in common, um, I'm just gonna note that it's not possible to have just greed on Friday, right? We have to have a harvest on Thursday and Friday. We don't have to have limelight on Saturday because we could have it on Thursday instead. Um, but if we don't have limelight on Thursday, then we'll have it on Saturday. So yeah, still options. Um, what must be true? All three films are shown on Thursday. No, we could have just greed and harvest and then put limelight on Saturday. Exactly two films are shown on Saturday. No, we could have limelight on Thursday, just greed on Saturday. Limelight and harvest are both shown on Thursday. It doesn't have to be true. Could have just greed and harvest. Greed is the only film shown on Saturday, possible, doesn't have to be true. And Harvest and Greed are both shown on Friday. That is the only option for Friday. E is the correct answer. All right, getting rid of the highlight here. Okay, if Limelight is shown exactly three times, so we have limelight every day. Okay. 
Um, harvest is shown twice. So that's tricky now, right? We still have options here um, because harvest, um, oh, and limelight every day. Um, so harvest shown exactly twice could be Friday, Saturday, could be Thursday or Thursday. We have to have harvest on Thursday, no other option. Uh, then we could have either Friday or Saturday. So we do have to have harvest on Thursday. All right. And greed is shown exactly once. Greed could be either on Thursday or Saturday. Which one of the following is a complete and accurate list of the films that could be the first film on Thursday? Well, either Limelight or Greed. So D is the correct answer. Um, there's no option where we just have Harvest on its own because Limelight is shown every day. But uh, we could have Limelight be the second film after Greed, that is possible. So Greed could be the first one there. Um, and so D is the correct answer. All right, so I mean, that was definitely, um, you know, the long way around with this game, but I did wanna kind of offer some things that would be applicable to um, other logic games and um, even to the test as a whole. So, um, yeah, so I'd say, you know, do this whole game again, um, you know, without looking at um, the answers again, or, you know, without going through the video again, and see if you can come to those uh, same conclusions um, in, uh, you know, certainly a shorter time period than this video. Um, and yeah, check your check your answers. And then if you are um, getting some wrong after having watched the video, maybe watch the video again or kind of um, scan through to the parts of the video that are relevant to the questions that you got wrong. Um, yeah, I, I hope this is helpful. Um, I'm going to continue doing this for other games. If there are any games that you would like me to analyze, um, or maybe you'd just like me to demonstrate how I do it without as much commentary, um, you know, let me know and I can, I can try to um, do it a bit faster. Um, or if there's something where you'd actually like more in-depth um, analysis of a particular question, um, or you want another that's similar type, please just let me know. Um, and I'd be happy to provide that. Okay. Um, great. Have a good one. Happy studying. And um, I will talk to you later.